Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the permanent and imposed action on column C1 for a typical floor. So here's our floor plan. Column 1 is over here. We're going to discuss why this is all red in a second. So the permanent action G. The permanent action G on column 1 for a typical floor will be G from B1, so B1 over here, G from B2 over there, and G from B3 over here. Okay? plus the self-weight of a column. So we got going into this column is B1, B2, B3, and the actual column itself it adds on to the self-weight. Now, the length of this beam was 3 meters. Okay, there's a column there and a column there. So half of that length, half the length of B2 will go to this column there, so 1.5 meters. This length of beam is 4 meters. It's supported by a column and a column. So half of its loading will go into that column. So in other words, it will be two meters. Okay, this in this length is four meters, so two meters of that. Uh, this column length, so this beam length, B1, was four meters. It's supported by a column in the shear wall there, which also supports it. So half of it will go into the column, half of it into the shear core. So two meters of this uh, beam will go into the column. So, let's work this out now. The dead load from beam 1. Okay, so beam 1 is over here. We're going to multiply the UDL we found by the length 2 meters. Okay, and that will give us a point load. So, we found a UDL of 5.78 kilonewtons per meter. So, that was for B1, so that's the interior beam. So, if we flick back quite a few pages, I'm going to try to find that for you. B1, we found the permanent action on B1 to be 5.78 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, and we're just going to multiply that by its length of 2 meters, which is going into C1. Okay, so working this out, 15.78 by 2 